Thank you very much. I thought we will have enough time. But uh, because of the 20 minutes, 30 minutes limit, I will just go straight to the issues. First of foremost, for every security operation to be successful, there must be collaboration and jointness. That is what we lack before. But the Renewed Hope Agenda brought all the security agencies and agencies that have to do with security together and create synergy among the security agencies. And that helped greatly in the operations that we do. The Chief of Defense Staff, the Chief of Army Staff, the Chief of Naval Staff, and the Chief of Air Staff are working together day and night as against what used to be. And that was hampering productivity and efficiency in operation. This was achieved in a very short time. But we really have to thank President for his choice of the officers manning security agencies in that country. In addition to the military, we have close collaboration with the Office of the National Security Advisor, the police, the civil defense, and all other military, paramilitary, and security enhancing agencies. This has translated to tremendous, tremendous progress during this last one year in view. You will all agree with me, those from Borno, they have enjoyed their cellar, the last cellar, freely. Those in Zanfra, most part, are calm when compared to the previous issues that are there. And on this, in this time, because of the synergy, we were able to neutralize more than 9,300 bandits and insurgents. About 7,000 arrested. Well, we rescued 4,641 victims of kidnap. That is in just one year. We have also arrested 4,882 assorted weapons and 83,900 assorted ammunition just in one year. And among those that we those that we neutralize are bandits that you hear, are bandits commanders that command hundreds of put soldiers. The names like Ali Kawaji, who you all know him, has been neutralized. Notorious Damina has been neutralized. Isiaku Bateri, neutralized. Bello Dangote, Osani Dangote, neutralized, and post a lot of others. We have neutralized no less than 20 commanders that command armies of insurgents and terrorists, uh, and terrorists just in one year. And again, in our effort, to improve the production of crude oil, which I'm sure the Minister of State Petroleum has explained the increase that we have in the production of crude oil. We were able to arrest 1,437, 363 neutralized, and we have freed in the Nature Delta 245 captives. 
those that are hostages. We destroyed 3,051 dog feet for illegal crude production. We destroyed 1,276 boats, 3,924 storage facilities, arrested and take, destroyed 408 vehicles and 2,700 assisting cooking ovens. So most of the illegal refineries are down now. And in, in addition, major vessels have been arrested. Vessels like Sweet Harbor Spirit, MT Senel, MB Tokito, and many others. And this has helped greatly to improve our crude oil production. And this is because of the synergy that President Bola Metinimu enjoined us to work together to deliver and end insecurity. And we have been also working with regional, regional security agencies and countries around us to improve the security situation. For instance, as of today, we are conducting Operation Desert, Desert Sanity 3 and Lake Sanity 2 with the Republic of Chad, Cameroon, and some representative from the Benin Republic. And this shows how we collaborate with neighboring states to fight insurgency. And in addition, we have arrested in congestion with those countries, many terrorists, and many weapons and drug traffickers. I'm sure you have seen a lot in the news. This shows the collaboration that we have between our neighboring countries as being efficient and helping us to reduce the influx of small arms and light weapons. President also supported the troop to enhance their capacity. You are all aware, because it was news then, the 2023 supplementary budgets that have seen huge allocation to the Ministry of Defense, thanks to Mr. President. That has helped us procure and upgraded a lot of our equipment. Time will not permit me to rail them out. But that has also enhanced our efficiency and has boosted the troop morals. You also are aware that the president signed the DICOM bill that helped us to produce locally what we need in the fight of insurgency and criminality in this country. That have seen, we have seen discussions around the production of weapons, and we are in talks with more than 50 private companies in Nigeria and abroad that are interested in producing weapons. And 13 out of them have already started production or about to start production. We know April, for example, in Lagos, they have started the assembly and production of armored carriers, safety equipment, radios, and others. Also, Profos uh, Pro in Ogun are producing armor carriers and they have invested heavily in the production of drones and they are on the testing mode now. So many of them are doing just what the DICOM bill detects. And I believe before the year runs out, 
will be able to launch the die console that will show what that will see to the production of all military and paramilitary uniforms in the country. Effort is put in place in DIACON also to synergize with universities for research and development so that we can produce much more. And still, in the period under review, our production line that has not been operating for years, I've started operation for this production of small caliber ammunition. We are currently producing and more factories for the production of arms and ammunition are coming in the next one year. In the personal welfare, because to have the spirit to fight and also keep their moral, the president has supported the armed forces with a lot of welfare packages. Their salaries and allowances are paid as and when to. They are being funded adequately to take care of the troops out there and also to provide for their accommodation and to provide for their training. And that has helped us to boost the morale of our troops heavily. And in the period under review, we believe that security is a whole society issue. So it has to have a whole society approach. And that is translated in the Renewed Hope Agenda because all the deliverables are linked to enhancing security, taking care of people's welfare so that we reduce the incidences of insecurity. And that has been happening. So we have close collaboration with Ministry of Interior I'm a Ministry of uh, for Humanitarian, other service agencies that provide for the welfare of the people. So we target those areas that have suffered and see how we can help and support their livelihood. And we have been having meetings also all around the country to involve the community, to take ownership of the security to give us information, to pass intelligence, to deprive the bandits and terrorists from taking over our country. And I'm happy to say we are getting good response from the people. All these bandits and the successes that we have, most of the information come from the, security, from the community. And we are doing a lot, meeting with the clergy, the traditional institution, the civil society organization, and of course, individual communities to support us so that the whole society approach in tackling security can be achieved. The road ahead, I want to assure you, we we'll continue to pursue them and we will continue to work diligently until we end this thing in no distant future. Because the instruction from Mr. President is always, when are you going to end this thing? And we keep telling him, in no distant future, we will end it. We have the equipment, we have the personnel, their morale is busted, and the community are supporting now. And we will continue to push and target those that will repent, we take them. Because even in the last year, we have seen, to the, we have seen over uh, 90, around 100,000 surrenders by Boko Haram and Eswa. And we expect to see more. So those that surrender, we take them. Those that refuse to surrender, we fight them and fight them hard.
One question you will ask. Why are these attacks coming? Well, I think most of you that lives in the river land areas, in the villages, and these attacks happen around uh, local governments that have forests. These people run and hide in the forest, come out on motorcycle, attack a community, and run back. But we are deploying technology today so that we can see them coming and take care of them before they attack our people. And that is in place, and we will continue to fight, and we will continue to deliver, and I assure you the successes that we have enjoyed in the last one year will be replicated and we will do more in the next year because even the recruitment has improved for the armed forces. So we are, we are continuing to, to, to recruit more and more so that we will end the insecurity in this country. Both our sister uh, agencies are recruiting, civil defense, uh, police, then the military. And president has approved that we can we, we recruit so that we improve the boots on the ground and also deploy technology heavily so that we can end the insurgency. What I want to assure you is uh, that the successes we had in the last one year, we will do more and we will continue to fight and we will end this thing in no distant future and we want to stop. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'll take questions from the media. And we'll take for this session, we'll take four questions at this trench. So can we just show our hand number one? We are glad that uh, you have said that the ministry is taking this as a priority because of government's willingness and a hunger to take advantage of the mineral sector. But my worry is, we know this will cost millions of dollars. It's not something that can be done in six months or one year or one budget cycle. I want to know how the ministry intends to solve this problem, the problem of funding for the mineral mapping. Then it leads me to the second question. We know that just like in the oil and gas sector where when you are drilling for petroleum, a lot of time, petrol com uh, crude oil comes with associated gas. And because Nigeria does not have a mineral, solid mineral mapping, we know that most of the times, minerals are mined you might be mining for lithium there are other associated minerals that form with lithium and without a mineral mapping the country is left at the hands of the miners who most of the time do not declare to the federal government that while mining for tin they come across certain to know how the ministry intends to solve this problem because it is the root of the root cause of the problem that has to do with smuggling of other associated minerals outside the country then finally in preventing what has happened in the niger delta region the mistakes nigeria made in oil over the last few years we have found out that mining companies that go to mine these solid minerals do not have a valid or authentic environmental impact assessment. Therefore, the dangers fall on the community, just like the Pfizer case in Kano. There are reported cases of host of communities suffering from health challenges because of these miners.
And because of that, we want to know how the ministry intends to stand up for the rights of host communities to see that they are protected from not just illegal miners, but miners that have valid licenses but do not put the health implications of communities first. Thank you very much. Yes, hello. Excuse me. Gentlemen of the press, your attention here, please. Gentlemen of the press, please pay attention here. Uh, the ushers, ushers, hello, ushers, please stop that distribution. We will soon be done, and then you can continue your uh, distribution of uh, large refreshment. Actually, when the bags were coming in, people were wondering what we have in those Ghana must go bags. So I think they wanted to be as transparent as possible, but it's also creating some noise and some chaos around us. I implore you to please hold on. We'll be done after the question and answer session, and then you can distribute whatever is there in the Ghana must go bags. But I know that what we have there is light refreshment. Light refreshment, nothing more than that. Thank you very much. Something light. The question number two. Yes, thank you, Honorable Ministers. My name is uh, Dr. Emmanuel Anule. I work with AFP. Um, I just want to find out from the Minister of Defense that following the uh, final withdrawal of uh, the French troop in the Niger last year, December, there have been these general concerns about uh, what a potential gap this would provide in terms of fighting insecurity within the uh, Sahel region. I just want to find out from the Minister of Defense, is, also, is Nigeria also concerned about this, uh, the withdrawal of these troops um, regarding its collaboration with sister nations around this region to tackle insecurity? Thank you so much. Thank you. Question number three, the lady on brown. Good afternoon, Honorable Ministers. My name is Juliana Taiwo Balohe of the Sun Newspapers. My question goes to the Minister of Defense. I would like to, uh, I would like you to help me understand how Nigeria intends to tackle climate change, environmental degradation, and at the same time, you are destroying um, uh, crude oil. Uh, theft, the boat. I want to I want you to help me understand that. What is the implication? What does it take to keep this crude? It's stolen, it's recovered. Why destroy them? Thank you. Uh, question number four there. Can we quickly move the mic? Your name, your media organization, then your question. Honorable Ministers, my name is Adebayo Bodore from AIT Ray Power. My question goes to the Minister of uh, Solid Minerals. There have been reports about insecurity being foiled as a result of mining in some parts of Africa, and Nigeria is also not an exception. So I'm asking. What effort is being taken to ensure security? You've been watching a live program from Abuja where in commemoration of his first anniversary in office, President Bola Tinumbu has directed his ministers to present their performance reports to Nigerians. The ministers speaking today include the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesom Wiki, Minister of Youth Development, Dr. Jamila Ibrahim, the Minister of Still Development, Shwaib Audu, Minister of Health, Mohamed Pate, Minister of Defense, Mohamed Badru, and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagbemi.
The briefings are meant to offer insights into the advancements and challenges within their respective ministries, providing a transparent overview of the administration's efforts and accomplishments during its first year.